What is up everyone? Today I have four of the top Benelli semi-auto shotguns from their most expensive to their least expensive and some of the most popular options in between. Today's video is if I could only have one Benelli, which one would it be? It's an ultimate shotgun showdown. I'm putting them all head to head to head to head to see if I could only choose one, which one would it be? So buckle up, it's gonna be a good one. Let's go. On this ultimate showdown, we have implemented the proprietary TFL SOSA test. You're probably wondering, SOSA test, what does that stand for? And to a lot of you, I know it's obvious, SOSA stands for Steve's Official Shotgun Assessment to Effectively Save Time. I don't think that acronym saved much time, however. Anyways, here's what we're gonna be looking at. So with this ultimate showdown, there's five different categories plus a bonus category. We're looking at everything, including the looks, the recoil and reliability, the ergonomics slash feel, breakdown, and vibes. Vibes is those shooting vibes, just like how well does it mount? How good does it feel to shoot? Trigger, all these things coming together. We just couldn't think of a name, so just vibes. We came up with shooting vibes, plus a catch-all bonus. This is like, if there's anything I just wanna give bonus points for, because I like to make stuff up, all these things are ranked on a scale of one to 10, each shotgun. But we start with the handicap. The handicap is price, right? So I wanna evaluate all these things relative to price. So for example, we have the Benelli Ethos Cordoba Best, that's a mouthful. MSRP is $2,349. Well, it wouldn't be fair to compare that gun to the Montefeltro, which has an MSRP of $12.99. The Super Black Eagle 3, $18.99 in the camo. The M2 comes in at $15.59, much different price points. So we've given each gun a little bit of a handicap based on its price level. So if you're wondering where do these points come from, the negative handicap, did we just draw them out of a hat? No, in fact, any gun less than $500 has no handicap, then 500 to 750 has one handicap, 750 to 1,000 has a negative two, so on and so forth. That's how we arrived at it. So let's jump into that first category. This is all so vain because it's just about the looks. I'm told that I can look, but I can't touch. And if I just look at these guns and I'm just like, mm -mm -mm, I want you. It's, it's a little bit of a challenge because you have a wood grain, you have some camos and you have some blacks. But if I throw out the colors, to be a 10, you have to be a knockout dynamite stellar, just like, woo, you, <laughs> that's tough. But I'll give this a nine. Ethos Cordova Best, I love the lines, I love the look, the way it all comes together, it's a slick looking shotgun. Super Black Eagle 3, a little bit lower. It's an eight, the M2, is so, so similar to the Super Black Eagle 3. There are some slight differences. If you look here, I love the curves of the Super Black Eagle 3. Just the lines, how it all comes together. Looks a little bit more classy. So I'm going a seven on the M2. And the Benelli Montefeltro strikes me as kind of just the plain, the plain Jane. I, I like the wood. I kind of like some of those classic looks. A seven on that as well. So we got seven, seven, eight, and nine for the looks category. Next category up is recoil and reliability, which I love because now I get to shoot and put these guns to the test. Let's kick it off with the Montefeltro, but let's see how she feels, recoil. I like it, pretty moderate. I am shooting target loads. I'm just gonna pop a few quick rounds. Recoil felt good, straight back to my shoulder. Nice cycling from the hip. You know what, time to move up to some heavier loads. These are ounce and a quarter waterfowl loads. 1,450 feet per second. She's got some pop. Manageable recoil. Slug time. Don't want to do that too often, but still not too bad. Reasonable. Okay, Benelli, Montefeltro. Uh, through my reviews, through my testing, very reliable gun. Not a whole lot to say. Let's compare that to the M2. M2. Honestly, I think feels slightly better right off the bat. Could be because I just went from shooting a slug to target loads again. No problem from the hip with the M2. Ooh, I like that a lot. Let's go to some waterfowl loads. Pretty much straight back. Into my shoulder, going to the slug. 
I think I just shot one of my trees. Dang it. <laughs> that definitely handled recoil a little bit better than the Montefeltro. Either that or I'm going numb from recoil already. Super Black Eagle 3. This, uh, I don't know this, but it seems like this is the name I hear all the time. I would venture to guess this might be their number one selling semi-auto shotgun. Weird. This gun, uh, has a few rounds through it. It was used in shotgun trick shots. Let's, uh, shoots from the hip just fine. What happened from the shoulder? I got one target load, two waterfowl loads. I think this and the M2 are probably right in line, which sort of makes sense. They have the same Comfort Tech stock, very similar there. The Super Black Eagle 3 is six pounds, 14 ounces. The M2 is seven pounds, two ounces. So one more waterfowl round in that gun, one in this gun. Okay. Okay, that settles that. Super Black Eagle 3, slightly more recoil, which would make sense. They have the same stock, a lot of the same configuration. Uh, biggest difference here is weight. Shouldn't make a big difference, probably within a half point. To the Ethos Cordoba, best. All right. This gun comes in at seven pounds. Interesting, I uh, thought there'd be a little less muzzle jump with that ported barrel. Hmm, surprises me a little bit. Same type issue I had with the Super Black Eagle 3. I have shot this gun review. It was very reliable in that review. Let's try to slow it down. It can be the problem with these inertia guns. They don't operate quite as fast as a gas gun. Can actually outrun these guns. So from the hip, the trigger's not resetting. That's interesting. Let's try it from the shoulder. I don't know if we'll have the same effect from the shoulder. We did, interesting. Take that into consideration. It actually surprises me. And we're doing this video right in front of y'all. I don't recall having these issues while shooting the review. In fact, I thought I was super impressed with the Cordoba Best because it even cycled really well over the head. As you can see, not the case today. This gun is not dirty, should be lubricated well. We'll give it a little extra boost of liquid courage called Otis Dry Loop. I haven't tried the heavier waterfowl loads in the Cordoba. Kill them! Ooh, I felt that in my face. Going to the slug. This is tough, but as far as recoil and reliability, the lightest recoiling gun was the M2. I'm actually gonna give the M2 an eight. Why not a nine, you might say. Well, these are inertia guns and they kick quite a bit heavier than gas guns. So I gotta leave that margin for some of the gas guns that I know are a lot less recoil, or at least perceived recoil. So we're gonna go eight. We're gonna go seven and a half on the Super Black Eagle 3. Had slightly more recoil, although I know this is a super reliable gun. The Ethos Cordoba Best, I'm gonna get a a seven, it had a little bit more recoil than I noticed out of the M2 and Super Black Eagle 3. There was some reliability issues. Generally, I didn't see that in the review. I'll be curious as we go on throughout this video to see if there's still issues with that, but I know the Montefeltro was the most reliable that I shot. Super impressed with the reliability of this. Maybe it had a little bit more recoil than the Cordoba, very, very close, but I'm gonna give both these a seven. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the ergonomics. This is the look, the feel, the function. This is one of my favorite categories because I just feel how a gun feels in your hands and how it mounts up and all those things are, are super important. Looking at the Montefeltro, you know, nothing fancy with looks, but you grab it in the hands, nothing fancy there either. But it feels good. It's just, it doesn't feel great, it feels good. I mount this gun up, it's pretty spot on. It's got a flat rib, which isn't my preference. I like a stepped up rib, I got that long neck. This is kind of a plain basic gun, uh, but there's a lot of similarities, so maybe I'll hit multiple at the same time. As far as the bolt release, the M2 and the Montefeltro, pretty much the same, just this basic round bolt release. Uh, charging handle between these two, basically the same. Super Black Eagle and the Ethos, basically the same. Trigger guards, these two are, again, almost identical. Safety, almost identical. Very interesting crossover between these two platforms. On the receiver side of things, when you look at the 
Super Black Eagle 3 and the Ethos, there are slight differences, but let's just feel it in the hands, mount it up, okay? Single bead on front, small fiber. You know, I wanna say that I like the forearm of this M2 quite a bit. It, like holding it like this, it feels really good. But then when I mount up, it kinda feels awkward to be honest with you. I really like to point my finger and it feels okay here, but as you come up, it just, the contours don't fit quite right. It just feels good like this. But if I take my hand just like this and go out like this, oh, you probably can't see it, but it just, I need my hand to be more like that. Don't love the forearm grip of the M2. Uh, I like the comfort tech, a lot of things to like about ergonomics on the M2. What I noticed though on the synthetic models is the grip texture is slippery. It's not very aggressive. Like your hands get slick or too dry, the grip texture just isn't there. But that's common on all three of these. M2 mounting up, it's got that stepped up rib. That helps me out quite a bit. Super Black Eagle 3, I really like the forearm of this. It feels good to hold it like this. It feels good to hold like that. I think they did a good job on the ergonomics. Mount it up. I'm right on target. Biggest thing I don't like about the Super Black Eagle 3, this big old fiber. Like I'm supposed to be focused on my targets, not on the fiber optic. So that can be changed. Not a huge deal. I'm not gonna make that a deal killer in this. The Ethos Cordoba Best. I don't know if I like the fuel quite as much as the Super Black Eagle 3. I, I do like the weight and the balance. And it does feel good in the hands. Again, grip texture leaves something to be desired. It's very similar. I almost prefer the Ethos just with the grip. I like the wide rib on the Cordoba best. I like the mid bead. I like the ported barrel. There's lots to like on this gun, but you're gonna pay for it. When it comes to the loading ports, looking at that stuff, all these guns are almost identical. So, ergonomics, feel. I'm gonna go eight and a half on the Cordoba Best. I didn't like the forearm grip quite as much as Super Black Eagle 3, but I like the texture a little bit better, just overall feel in the hands, how it all comes together. I'm going eight here. Really like the feel of Super Black Eagle 3. Also has good balance. Texture, grip, leaves something to be desired. Hate that big fiber. We're gonna drop down to a seven, all the way down to a seven on the M2. The feel of this gun, the balance, every, everything, is down just a notch, in my opinion, from the Super Black Eagle 3. And the Montefeltro, just a slight step up from the M2. Very similar in a lot of ways, but the forearm, way more comfortable. Ah, I'm gonna drop it down to a seven. The plus stepped up rib for me on the M2. So when we go to the scoreboard and look at the grand scheme of things, the Montefeltro comes in at a seven, M2, seven, Super Black Eagle, three, eight, and the best, eight point fiver. All right, moving right along to breakdown. These are all Benelli's, they're all inertia. They're all fairly simple to break down, but there are very slight differences. I don't wanna take a lot of time on this. So I'm gonna rush as fast as I can to break each one of these guns down. Ready, set, go. Montefeltro's up first. Four end cap is probably my least favorite four end cap out of the four Benelli's. Not all that easy to grab a hold of. Four end cap off, forearm and barrel off. We're gonna close the bolt gently. We're gonna grab our punch, pop the pin. Uh-oh, I can't get that. Bolt handle off. M2, four end cap. A little nicer than the Montefeltro, a lot easier to handle comes apart just as easy. We're gonna take my punch, punch out the pin in the trigger group, pull that out, see if this is any easier. Oh my goodness, these Benelli's. Not getting that one, not gonna waste the time on it. Going to the Super Black Eagle 3, which has maybe my favorite, kind of an oblonged four end cap, really like that. Woo, look how fancy that is. Look at that, Super Black Eagle 3, taken apart. The reason that goes so fast is the receiver actually comes off in two pieces. I can access the whole receiver like that. Coming to the Ethos. Kind of a small four end cap to get your hands around. Still like it better than the Montefeltro. Oh, look at that. That's why they call it the best. You can actually take the charging handle off. Similar type deal. Receiver comes off, bolt comes off. There's our Benelli lineup. Uh, interesting, there's so many similarities between the Montefeltro and M2. Could not get the bolt handles out easily. 
Super Black Eagle 3 and the Ethos Best, Cordoba Best, break apart super quickly, as you can see. Now let's put them back together on the clock. Ready, set, go. Boom, just like that, they're back together. You know, look at these guns, how they break down. They're inertia guns, they're simple. But these two are by far the simplest guns to take apart and put back together. Easy cleaning, easy maintenance. I'm gonna have to give nine and a half and nine and a half. Both phenomenal, very similar guns. If there was a slight edge, it would be on the Super Black Eagle 3 because the four end cap is a little easier to operate. Not a big deal, nine and a halves. Dropping down to these, very similar platforms. Couldn't get the bolt handles out of either of those just for that reason and you also have to take out the trigger group to fully access the receiver. One extra pin to pop. We're gonna drop these at uh, an eight and a half. Back to our trusty scorekeeping board. We're at eight and a half, eight and a half. What'd I say I'm giving these two? Nine and a half. Nine and a half? That ain't good enough. I mean, they're, they're the simplest ones out there. I don't know of any other more simple. They get a 10. Nice job, Benelli. Very cool design. Coming down the home stretch, we got just general shooting vibes. Part of that is speed shooting. When I speed shot these guns in the review, I'm not gonna fully do it over, but I shot a point nine four at the Ethos Best. One of my best scores ever. Incredible that I could shoot that fast with inertia gun. It must have just been a lucky day. I don't know. With the Montefeltro up here, I shot a 1.09. Still a tremendous score. With the M2, I shot a 1.08. But this is what's interesting. The Super Black Eagle 3, I shot a 1.34. That's not fast. Well, Steve, why'd you shoot the other one so good, but not the Super Black Eagle 3? It could be because I reviewed this one last year. I reviewed these three this year. As I've done speed shooting, I've gotten faster. I've learned the tricks of the trade. So I'm gonna do a few shots with Super Like Eagle 3, see if I can get down closer to the range that these guns were. Uh, then I'm just gonna do some general shooting, give you some feedback on the guns, score these, go to the bonus round, and then choose my one, just my one, Benelli. Oh, there it is. I got that last clay, right? Yeah, chipped it, 129, got faster, 129. That's nowhere close to some of these other scores though. Come on, Steve, let's go. Ooh, that wasn't even a good throw. One, one, two. So look at that. I'm just four or so tries in. I'm already getting a lot better scores than I did last year with this gun. Came a lot quicker. One, one, two. My score with the Montefeltro though was a 1.09. That's tight. I'll give it one more try. Ooh. I didn't get that third clay, but that was one second. And I had a .15 split, that is smoking. Oh my goodness, I cheated, I cheated. Okay, I know I cheated, a .74, that tells you that I cheated. But I had a .14 split and a .16. That's 14 one hundredths of a second and 16 one hundredths of a second between shots. That's smoking fast. I'm not gonna keep beating that to death. What I've proved is this gun can keep up with these other ones. I was super impressed with the splits. Let's just get to some general shooting off the machine. Just some good old shooting vibes here. One thing I'm always curious is how about just a little over the head action? Could I actually cycle this gun over the head? If we just... All three shells came out, look at that. Pulling off the machine. Yeah. The more I shoot this gun, the more I seem to like it. It is very reliable. A little heavier on the recoil for trick shots. Clay's out of the air, you can dust them all day long. I've been pretty impressed with the Super Black Eagle 3. As far as vibes, they're up there. They're up there quite a bit, but we got more guns to shoot. The Ethos Cordoba Best. Probably the most similar to the Super Black Eagle 3. Swings very natural, look at that. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Has the carbon fiber rib on it that's interchangeable. I'm curious here, I gotta see, just real quick, what kind of splits I can get on this gun. Okay, that was fast. A 1.6 and a 1.7, so it's right up there with the Super Black Eagle 3. I feel like I shoot this gun a little bit better than the Super Black Eagle 3. Dust, dust. Shooting it that way was better than the Super Black Eagle 3. I enjoy shooting it tremendously, even over the head. Shooting vibes are high, if I do say so myself. Oh yeah. Going to the M2. 
No, it doesn't swing quite as well as that Ethos. I can tell you that right off the bat. Not as natural of a swing, but what if we were just to toss a few? Oh, we can crush those. How about a little over the head action? Just give her, see what she feels like. Oh, crush, crush, crush. She's fast, she's fast. All right, down to the $1,200, the bargain basement shotgun. Doesn't point nearly as natural as these three, but like I said, these have stepped up ribs. This has a flat rib. I do not shoot flat ribs nearly as well. There we go. I actually, there it is. Yeah. This is tough, shooting vibes. Oh man, the Ethos Cordoba. Feels great in the hand, swings really well. The weight balance ratio is nice. I'm gonna give it a solid eight and a half. A little lighter recoil, which you're probably not gonna accomplish out of inertia gun would be ideal. I'm gonna give the Super Black Eagle three an eight, slightly less than the Cordoba Best. M2 is a step down. Uh, from the eight, I'm gonna give it a seven. And actually the Montefeltro, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Surprising, this Montefeltro, even though I don't really wanna like it, I look at it, it's kind of basic, it's boring. It doesn't come in a camo option, so if that's a deal killer, then don't even consider the Montefeltro, but I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. I'm gonna get the trusty, dusty scoreboard out. I'm gonna give some bonus points. I'm gonna give the Super Black Eagle three bonus points for just seemingly being super reliable. I have had Next to no issues with that at all, no matter what I throw at it. One to the Super Black Eagle 3. The Ethos Cordoba Best for allowing me to shoot such a fast score in the review. Bonus point there for the best. Uh, M2, I got nothing to give a bonus point over. I got, I got nothing. But the Montefeltro, for surprising me. For looking like that plain Jane, but coming out swinging like you got it going on. Montefeltro, bonus point. So if we put these scores together, Let's see what we come up with. The Montefeltro. We end up with a 33 plus a bonus point. 34. Okay, let's hear it for the Montefeltro. M2, where are you at? You are at a 32 and a half with no bonus points. I'm sorry, 32.5. This is taking into account the handicap, taking that off, right? SBE3, where are you at? 35 and a half plus a bonus point, 36 and a half. We got a new leader in the Super Black Eagle 3. I'm excited. What's this gonna hold for us here? Oh, oh, woo! Wow, is as close as it can get, ladies and gentlemen. 37 for the Ethos Cordoba Best, the highest scorer on my Sosa test. I'd love to hear what you think of the scorecard. Uh, is there things we should add, things we should subtract? Is it beneficial? I'm having a lot of fun with it, as you can probably tell. What I like about this test that we've put together is that it accounts for price. So this gun was negative seven right off the bat. You know, it had the handicap because of the high price, but I found the attributes of this gun just enough to match up to its price. The next gun with the 36 and a half, so for you to consider Depending on what you're doing, of course, right? Maybe you're a heavy, heavy water fowler, maybe you're heavy sporting clays. This is a very close contender, the Super Black Eagle 3, at a lower price point, considerably lower. Montefeltro, my number three. Just as it came out on the scoreboard, number three, and then the M2 is my number four. So if I could only have one Benelli semi-auto shotgun, Give me that Ethos Cordoba best. Meet me out at the range. Love to hear what you think. Put it down in the comments below. Do you agree with my rating scale? What would you say differently? Look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Would also love to hear what other, if I could only have one shotgun, would you like to see? Could be Browning Semi-Autos. Could be Beretta Over-Unders. Could be whatever you can think of. Put it in the comments. Remember, guys, whether you're in the field, or in life. You're only gonna hit those targets that you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya!